Hi and welcome back to a new video. You might recognize this unreleased prototype, which is an NVIDIA Titan ADA that we already featured in at least two videos. One where we just took benchmarks and saw how it performed versus 4090 and also 5090. It was quite impressive. If you missed it, feel free to check out the video. Then we had a second video featuring the special power adapter that NVIDIA made specifically for this card because it comes with dual 12 volt high power, which is super interesting, especially now with all the adapter issues and the 12 volt high power issues that we are seeing. Now today I want to tear down the cart. I didn't want to do it earlier because I just wanted to be sure that I'm testing and like tested everything that I wanted because no matter how careful you are, there is always a certain risk left of damaging the cart. You know, you can be as careful as you want, but you're putting force onto PCB and other components and that could potentially always damage something. But now, I feel ready to do this and today we want to tear down this prototype. Endorphy expands the popular ARC series with the ARC 700 white RGB with its well-known features but with white color. The ultra mesh front delivers maximum airflow to keep even the largest high-end graphics cards perfectly cool. For your CPU, the case supports 360 radiators at both the front and top. It also features clean cable management, USB-C connectivity and a tool-free design that makes building your PC easier than ever. Check out the link in the description for all details. The good thing for me is that C from Gamers Nexus had a 4090 Ti prototype that he teared down on his channel and I think they should be quite similar, at least the outer appearance is very close between the two cards and I think there might only be slight differences between the two and that might help me to just figure out how to open this thing. It's still one of the or probably the biggest card that I ever had in my hands with quad slot super super heavy. I still found it super impressive. If you look from the side through the card, you can see nothing of the card itself. Well, nothing of the PCB, GPU, anything like that. You can just see a huge heatsink. And on the left, you see a fan. On the right and also in the center, you can see a fan that you can't see otherwise. But it just makes it clear that there's not an electrical important component such as like the PCB, VRM or anything visible in this area. And especially if you think prior to 5090, it's such a special design. We will start with the most obvious first, which are the screws on the IO shield, where we can see triple display port and a single HDMI connector. And I'm quite sure I'm not the first person to open this. It's also interesting that we have Torx screws on the bottom and Phillips hat on top. And especially this Phillips screw looks a bit abused. And with this I.O. shield it is gone. You can see like a parting line between the connectors. So just at the display port and HDMI area, there's a small line where I think the card will come apart. And everything that you can see is fully made from metal. So it feels very high quality and absolutely nice. And if it's like with Steve's prototype, I should be able to just gently use the screwdriver and try to lift off this plate. So this plate and this side taco triangle thing should be one piece and should hide a PCB underneath. Could also be that I have to remove this part of the frame first. At least it's kind of loose. So it seems like the clue is to just push this to the side a little bit. And then should be able to take this off. So already just by looking at this single piece, I can tell that a 4090 Ti prototype and Titan ADA are not identical. The big difference here are additional heat pipes and also just visually a completely different coating. So Steve's part from what I could tell was just a like black anodized piece of aluminium, but here we have a lot of heat pipes integrated into what should be the back plate. So we have a small one on the bottom left, a bigger band one on the bottom right and a huge one that goes all the way through the back plate and then also additional things like thermal pads to make contact to various components on the PCB side and it's usually a misconception that people think it's just for dissipating the heat through the back plate. I mean there's not a huge amount of surface area on here to dissipate heat but it's often also done to spread the heat through the PCB 
So the heat is more spread evenly in the PCB and can then be transferred to the front side for the actual cooling. I'm also quite sure that this is not the original state how Nvidia built this card. First of all, I never saw those blue pads with Nvidia, so that would be a first time. But also, for example, this contact patch right here should make contact with this, what is probably like a VRM controller. But as you can see, there was nothing in between, like no thermal paste or anything. And probably whoever disassembled this the last time was either too lazy or just forgot to put this back there. Now to keep disassembling the card, we will have to further disassemble it. First, you might think we just remove this retention bracket and take it off, but that's usually not how this works. Because as you probably have seen, we have this special design where the PCB, the main PCB that carries the GPU and the memory is in parallel to the motherboard. So not like a traditional card where the PCB would sit here. That's why we have two separate PCBs, the one that carries the PCIe signal and transfers it to the main PCB. And that's where we have to get access to, to be able to also remove this PCIe PCB to get access to the main one. And that's kind of the prior state to the RTX 5090 that we see these days, which is even more complex. But I, you know, I have to give Nvidia credit for what they're doing. As much as I like to criticize them for a lot of things, they have very good engineers for making the craziest cards you can buy. We have to remove the centerpiece now. I have to be careful. I don't want to scratch and damage this further. You can see some marks already where somebody prior to me probably tried to open this and abused it a little bit. So it's held down by those two magnets which attach to the screw heads. And with this we should be able to take off the center frame. And also on this piece, you can feel how this DNA went into the 5090, kind of similar like backplate piece behind the PCIe PCB, holding it down. Nice to see the evolution. So next I will try to remove all those tiny cables that are probably for fan control, for RGB and all these kind of things like small accessories and then remove some of the screws and then we might be able to take out the main PCB. Now the PCI Express PCB, that's interesting in the regard of, you can see that the main part, like the PCI Express lanes come from this portion through something that looks like a ribbon cable and then go all the way and spread through the entire connector. There's another tiny screw hidden in front here. And with this we can reach underneath a small cover right here. Now I hope the last puzzle piece is the spring mechanism holding everything down. I couldn't show how I removed it because I figured out that there's like stickers underneath like a serial number which I want to cover for obvious reasons. And there we have it. The full and absolutely crazy dense PCB. And here we have the front side. We have the Titan Ada GPU which is the AD102. Don't, don't be surprised I had to cover quite some information on that card again just to protect the source. So we have the GPU in the center AD102 surrounded by 12 memory ICs and also another 12 memory ICs on the backside which totals 24 and that with 2 GB per IC gives the card a total of 48 GB of memory. And then left and right of the memory we also have the power supply to the card and it's, it's just absolutely impressive how they designed this PCB. There's not a single millimeter that is not occupied so they definitely had to put a lot of work into R&D into making this. I didn't remove the PCIe connector just to protect it because we just know from RTX 5090 cards that this is a rather fragile connection and I don't want to risk damaging anything on there. And just to complete this also the backside even though we looked at the backside before but just with the card being fully removed, looking at the backside. You might have noticed that there is no power connector on this card, like direct 12 volt high power connector, and also no big wires that we disconnected, at least on first sight. Because the power connection is all over on the left right here, where it looks like empty solder connections just left of the big inductor. The three holes you can see there, that is the power connection. And you probably noticed that I decided to remove the PCIe cable because I was, you know, just working more with this and it started bending back and forth and that's exactly what I wanted to avoid so I thought it's, it makes more sense to securely remove it. Now we can also take a look at this which is just a PCB with the wire hanging from it. So we have 
something similar to 5090 where it transitions from a PCB into a flexible cable and then to the connector. Similar connect connector as 5090, just bigger in this case. Well, 5090 connector just went smaller. And these contact patches right here that are for power connection, they are making contact with wires that are basically built into the cooler. And that's one more difference to the 4090 Ti prototype. Here, these copper shiny pieces, those are the power connectors, the power cables. We see these that are the sense pins. And the difference here is that on the 4090 Ti prototype, there were only two connectors and now we have three. That is mainly because here we have dual 12 volt high power and on 4090 Ti prototype, there was just a single 12 volt high power. I think one of them, probably the center one, or maybe the one on the left should be ground. And then we have two times 12 volt. That would be my assumption. And those should be all the sense pins from the two connectors. And now the last thing to do is to remove the frame from the actual heatsink. So the heatsink is basically everything that is black here and then remove it from the golden frame. It's also mind blowing to disassemble this and thinking of somebody has to assemble this. In, and in mass production, this would have been crazy in terms of how difficult and how expensive this would have been. And here we can see it again, it's solid copper wires, like not individual ones, just bent pieces of massive copper. And then on the front side just goes into the two 12 volt high power connectors. It, it must be so expensive to make this and especially making this on low quantity for like this kind of heatsink prototype. This must be so incredibly expensive, this single card. One thing you should not neglect is how long it takes to reassemble the card. It took me one and a half hours and I had to go partially through my footage to just figure out which screws were in which position to make sure that I'm not missing one, that everything goes back together. And you can see display signal is also there. So the card is still working, which I'm super happy about. And that was, that was an impressive journey. This card and the RTX 5090 are the most impressive video cards I have ever seen in terms of engineering effort and just everything that went in this so complex, but also so nice from an engineering perspective. So huge respect to Nvidia for what they did here. And I don't even want to know what it costs to make this prototype, especially, you know, I'm not sure how many of these ever existed and low quantity with this kind of engineering level has to be very, very expensive. I hope you enjoyed this video. See you next time. Bye bye.